Hello there, those of you that are still about, long time no see, it's only been five years since the last one. Today I've got a pair of funnel 4x4 trapdoors to show you. I was inspired to make these after watching Cube's recent video, link in the description. Well, that was actually six weeks ago, but I forgot that making and editing videos is actually quite difficult, so we're here now. His was a clever design, but I thought I could improve it to get rid of the torch burnout to create a somewhat nicer, more scratchable opening sequence and put the input in a more accessible location. And as you might have noticed, I somehow managed to shave a block off the length of it too. So this is a new record size, I think. Uh, 8 blocks wide, 11 blocks long, too high for a total of 176 blocks in volume. So I'll whip the top off and show you how it works. So here it is and I'm going to start explaining the input side because as you can see it's a lot simpler than the other side. The extension works the same as Cube's design. So it's got the line here powering these target blocks which is going to push out the top layer and the bottom piston. And then these two pistons here for the middle extension are going to get powered, but then um, bud powered, but then this is going to turn off and leave them extended but unpowered. Then the retraction is a bit trickier, it's easier to see what's happening to that down below. So at the moment these aren't, these aren't powered anymore. So when this input turns off, these are going to retract, which they will then update those. So there'll be a gap here, those will both be off. And then this line here is going to get double powered through this mechanism here really rapidly. So first of all it's going to fire these two, as you can see, which pulls back the, these pistons from here. And then these are going to get powered the moment they land back here diagonally through these two blocks. Now it has to happen at a very precise timing so it doesn't just re-extend these again. And then that pulls back the last blocks. This bit here is the double pulser and doesn't actually do anything when the mechanism turns on because it does do the pulses but it goes into an already powered block so nothing happens. But on the retraction, this comparator is powering this block which is powering this note block. So when the lever turns off, this is going to unpower, unpower the note block which is going to give an update through the observer which gives the first pulse. At the same time as this um, comparator is turning off, this torch turns on which will then power this observer to then power the note block again but a tick later. Now that's only a short pulse so it only um, pulses to this turning on and off quickly will only make this observer pulse once so that then gives two pulses. You can see here Now the comparator is really important there because this is, as you can see, it's circular. So this comparator is powering this block, which is doing the note block, which is doing the observer, which is going back into this block, and it would cause a loop. But the comparators aren't sensitive to the short pulses coming from the observers, so it, that doesn't create the loop, which is important so you don't end up with a clock. Now from there, the same thing happens on both sides for um, extending the side pistons which happens down here. The one over here is just offset a bit to save on redstone, basically. You could put them both in the same position. Um, and that both happens the same thing, so these observers on both sides from the torches push these um, normal pistons, which pushes these um, observers to this position and then straight this observer gets powered and pushes them straight back again. Like that. That's why I have that slightly janky and not very nice opening sequence, but it was the most compact way of doing it. You do have to be careful about the timings with these, because if you push these um, observers back too quickly, they'll never actually pulse this piston and this piston. For some reason they don't activate, so you need the delay of the observer going into it to achieve that. 
Now this mechanism at the back is the worst observer spaghetti I've ever created, but it does do the job. So what happens is when when these get pushed, it's gonna this piston's gonna extend, which is gonna power both of these observers. So first of all, this one's gonna power here, and then with a stupid bit of delay through a repeater and then through three observers it first pulses these back pistons which is then going to push that out to there and because that that's timed just so as this piston has been pushed them back and then is retracting it's going to cause them to update to this observer to just pulse this once as it gets to that position and this this side does the same thing both times on the ex extension and retraction on this side this does the same action it's just spitting the blocks out but the hardest part of this mechanism was actually making sure that these two only fired once because you need to fire these that position down there with this a few times to make that do its double extension but all of the times I kept trying, I kept accidentally double pulsing these so these wouldn't toggle their position each time. And that's how we ended up with this horribleness here. So these only get powered once because this piston is pushed out like that and then that observer will only power it once. And then the trickiest part of it all was the very last pulse which took me ages to get to pulse these two for the final attraction. Uh, I was really struggling in this space to actually get a long enough delay to that so it would actually retract it at the end. And that was achieved by this this long pulse pushing out to um, toggle that and then you got that extra bit of delay of this piston pulling back after those four ticks to then finally pulse the last bit. And that's basically all of it. Now I did say I had two designs and this is the other one because that is nice and compact but the opening mechanism on it is absolutely horrible so I made this second more symmetrical one which is also fairly compact it just reuses that same mechanism from there on both sides with the double pulser which is the exact same thing here um, but with an input line that just goes between both sides so it's symmetrical and then a mechanism to make sure the sides do the same thing which is just using observers to pulse that and there using a note block and taking the pulse out one of the pulses out from the double pulser um, so if you were actually going to make this door I don't know why you would because though it might be a nice decorative trap door but I don't know why you'd actually build it but I had fun making this anyway but you can pretty much see how this works from here you also might have spied this third one in the world over here which looks like it is even smaller with a block shaved off both sides from cubes design but actually I couldn't finish this so I'm I'm convinced you can make this a block one block short in this dimension because look how empty this design is this entire side here isn't doing anything and this is fairly fairly spacious over here as well so I feel like you could do some horrible observer spaghetti here to take this layer off obviously you probably wouldn't be able to do it um, symmetrical you're going to have to pass the poles across here for the um, powering both sides or having the poles travel around in a circle or something to do that but it feels like it should be possible given how empty this design is and since people used to always moan about it back there when I was making videos I never made proper tutorials I will actually do a tutorial so here we go I'm gonna start with these are the this is the 4x4 the bottom layer of the funnel so the pistons here I'm gonna push these blocks into the middle here so and this is our input back here the green blocks so I'm gonna have double um, two sets of sticky pistons there and exactly the same on the other side start with the bottom layer to make our lives easier 
I'm going to have these here and here and then repeaters with three ticks on them and then our upper pistons here and here and just fill in all the blocks and have target blocks behind those pistons with torches on either side and then place some redstone there all them and a comparator also don't have enough in the inventory for all this stuff going there which is going to stop our double pulse feeding back through get yourself another observer here block there, block there, block there redstone dust there so that means that can pulse all the way around into there and then we're going to do a similar thing on this side a um, observer there and we're going to get ourselves a normal piston below that there so that's going to push the side bits and we can do the same thing here but actually on this one we don't want this double pulse to be pushing this twice so if we just take the output from the observer into this redstone dust and put a piston there we can do that no. make sure that's all turned off and you can see that now works just that little mechanism and our two pistons on each side, our non-sticky pistons are working. Now here we're going to put a observer, any sort of block, another observer and here we're going to put an observer, any sort of block and observer the same but then we're going to have to fill in that gap here and then our other piston to push them back is going to go just there, level with these blocks and then from that we're going to want an observer to take an output from that into these two blocks and then we're going to fill in these with solid blocks here and then we can also put our sticky pistons along the sides like that now fill in these blocks and then if we put observers there and there going into the redstone you can see this working. There you go, filling in these two blocks here. Um, both sides work. So now for this mechanism to complete this side, have another observer there and there with a piston on four ticks facing out like that, and some more redstone there. Put our final two pistons there and fill in the front. And along here, if I can remember we're going to have observers facing down there and then in, down there and then make sure it's facing down and then across into these pistons and then put repeaters on one tick facing back here for taking those observers and then we'll put a piston there, there and then observers there and there facing this way so they're going to power that redstone line and that should be it. If it's pulsed while you're building it, this side might mess it up. So just open it, reset all the blocks by hand in the middle here because those might be out of order as well. And then that's it done. This design does require a constant input like a Lieber provides rather than the button, but there must be clever enough people out here to squeeze a T flip flop into this small space. Here that's left over. You could probably put on those hopper dropper T flip flops here, maybe. Um, post something in the comments if you think you can squeeze one of them in there. And that's it for me. Um, I might make another video, you never know. If anyone's interested, I can make one about this redstone remote that I've got. It's quite cool, and you can link it and link it with levers like that. You could even link two. have them work simultaneously which is quite cool that's a command block and function thing so if you're interested in that let me know in the description Comments. as well and I'll see you hopefully before 2026